Hello YouTube, this is Bubs Comics coming at you with a quick comic haul. We're going to go through this real quick. Uh, we've got sexy ladies today. All the hot, juicy, lovely uh, lady covers. Can't go wrong there. Uh, you got nice cat fight over here. You got, oh man, one of the best uh, pictures, sci-fi, uh, anything I've ever seen. I absolutely love, love, love that book. Um, Lois Lane and uh, Catwoman fighting it out. And uh, Magneto approves. So uh, first up, we got Liberty Meadows number 22, Frank Cho's little pet project. And it says, Evil Brandy versus Brandy. To be honest, I don't know which one's the evil one. Probably the one with claws out, I would guess, is the evil one on that. Signed by the artist himself, Frank Cho. And uh, he just does fantastic work. Now, I have not collected any of this run uh, up until this point. So this is my first time getting a Liberty Meadows book. Now, when I tell people that I'm a Frank Cho fan, a lot of them will ask if I have any of these Liberty Meadows, and of course I say no. But I guess what the deal is with them is that they are very uh, kind of a Archie type book or kind of a, a soap opera e type story. So I don't know. This one's signed by Frank Cho with a certificate of authenticity from Lone Lone Star Comics, and uh, so there you go. Liberty Meadows signed by Frank Cho, number twenty-two. Next, we got Pen G and C. Number nine, uh, Cave Woman cover, and Bud Root doing his best here. And uh, this is the last run that he did the interior arts for as well. Um, after that, they passed it off to other people, and it, it never was as good. The covers are still good because a lot of them are still Bud Root covers. And we'll just we'll just open up to the uh, centerfold a little bit, but uh, you know, there's a quick glimpse of how great some of that art is. It's just fantastic. And then uh, here on the outside, look at that wraparound cover. I mean, that's some skill right there. That is awesome. Look at that T-Rex eating up the uh, the snake there. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Just great stuff. Interior is fantastic. He's just an awesome, awesome, awesome artist. And I wish that he had done the rest um, of all the... Cave Woman books, and if I see him at Heroes Con uh, this year, I'm going to ask him why he didn't do any more of those uh, interior arts, because he was absolutely amazing. Uh, next, we have number 10, Cave Woman Pangean and C number 10. It's going to cost you an arm or a leg, preferably a leg. Paying the troll, it says. Look at that. So this was the last uh, run that he did. So hopefully uh, I'll get an answer on that this year. Next, I don't know if you guys followed this book <coughs> or rather this um, this uh, show. So this is uh, Sherlock with uh, uh, Benedict uh, Cumberbun there. <laughs> so, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, he, he is a Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I think it's a BBC uh, produced show. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of diehard Sherlock Holmes fans who were, um, you know, who want him to stay in his own century um, weren't a big fan of this show. Uh, I like the show because I can like both versions of the character. No, they're not the same. It's a different iteration of the character. They could have even given him a different name. And I think I still would have liked the show. And then everyone would have said, well, he's just like Sherlock Holmes. So there you go. But pretty cool. And I remember this episode. So the episodes are basically like movies. And they come out like once every other year or so. <clears throat> and uh, I remember this episode. And this is actually a scene in that episode. Where the girl is sitting there naked on his chair there. And he's asking her like, what are you doing here? Why are you... Of course, he's very attracted to her. She's very attracted to him. Although I don't know why. And <laughs> she, he's like, so what are you doing on the chair? naked and she's like well i just wanted you to see that i have nothing to hide because of course she's a suspect so fantastic fantastic uh story the whole that's one of my favorite episodes or movies or whatever you want to call it in that sherlock series this is like a manga eyes version of that movie uh, i don't really know how that works but the interior is all like manga stuff i don't collect manga or know much about it really but I knew I liked this cover, and it reminded me of a, of a good movie-slash-show, so I picked it up. 
Next, we'll get into somebody that gets a lot of flack on my channel, and that's J. Scott Campbell coming in with the Black Cat. I think this is number four, but how the heck would you know? Where's the numbers? Let's see. Uh, it looks like a number two. It looks like two there, two more there. I don't see the number for this book. I just see a lot of twos. Um, let's see. Bonus digital edition inside. Uh, I'm trying to read this. Uh, I don't see a number on it. I think it's number four, though. Uh, we're going to go with number four. Anybody else see any numbers on there? Anyway, I tried my best, everybody. So there's number four, and, and you know, J. Scott Campbell, I'm learning to forgive his, his shortcomings, like his long-coming legs. Uh, it's a little bit ridiculous. At least he let her stand up on her tippy toes. To, to compensate for some of the elongation of her legs. It's, it's kind of like wet wax or something. Um, and then, of course, this girl's got like the mental illness haircut, so that's not real cool. But other than that, he does pretty good, and I think that his black cat is one of the best black cats out there. So I'm glad he's doing the A covers for this run, because who's paying the price for the C, D, and E covers? I mean, not me. And an oldie but a goodie, we got Tomb Raider number two. Uh, as you all may or may not know, I've been collecting um, all the different variants of the Tomb Raider covers uh, from the original Top Cow Image series, um, and I'm collecting, trying to collect every art different variant, if that makes sense. So every variant that has different art on it. Uh, so this one is gold foil edition, so there's probably one that doesn't have a gold foil, but I don't care. So that's not what I'm after. I just want different main art. So in this case, I did not have this art, this cover. So I think it's Andy Park. Yeah, it's Andy Park. Uh, and if you notice, she's wearing like a little Santa hat. And you see that. And she's got like a bag full of goodies there too. So good for her. So hopefully y'all are enjoying that. And we will get uh, this put up next year for the uh, comic uh, Christmas comic showdown already building my collection uh metarog and uh silver age dave and um lawrence of the go-to geeks just don't know what's coming when i bring the fire this year on um christmas cover so look out for that gentlemen uh next we've got um lone star comics presents uh this was like a a store exclusive uh for fathom so all new fathom uh, this, I just, it was a buck. I couldn't, uh, couldn't pass it up. I had to get it. So, uh, so there it is. <laughs> so I, I just had to have it. Um, I guess what they did with this one is that there is a ton of variants for this Fathom number one, uh, that they brought back the 10 years of Fathom, um, their anniversary. And what they did was, is that the surfboard was blank and her top was blank. And her bikini bottom was blank. And what they did was that for all the different variants, they would just, like a store variant or any kind of logo or any kind of uh, trade variant, they would just change that, and they would just change that, and they would just change that, and everything else was the same. So there's tons of these variants out there. I guess uh, mycomicshop.com, Lone Star Comics had their own, and I, don't, I guess it didn't sell that many because I picked this one up for a buck uh, from them. So, <laughs> near mint. Can't go wrong there. What? More Christmas? What is this? Uh, that's Mike Diodato, I believe. Um, more Christmas. Glory and Friends Christmas Special. So, look at that. Santa crane necking. And look at what she's doing with that, that poor, poor snowman. And the reason that I say he's a poor, poor snowman is not because he's getting his carrot tugged ever so gently. I'm sure he doesn't mind that too much. As you can see, he's sporting a nice cold smile over the whole ordeal. But you know what's going to happen. This fella's going to melt real fast. He's going to have some premature melting. Bless his little uh, snowy heart. Uh, he's not going to last very long at all. And if you wonder why she's named Glory, uh, there she is in all hers. Glory and Friends, Christmas special number one. Look out, Christmas fellas. I'm coming after you. 2020 is going to be my year on the Christmas show. 
And we got Don Marquez's Retro Blast. <laughs> when my wife saw this one, she says, that's paint. I, she, I could not get her to believe that this was anything other than body paint. And I said, no, it's probably a skin tight. She's like, nope, that's body paint. There is nothing that could possibly be that tight uh, that's got to be paint. And I said, well, if you notice the side stitching on her leg, she's like, nope, that's paint too. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I'm not going to argue with the woman. She's the love of my life, and she's absolutely gorgeous, so she's always right. Uh, Don Marquez's Retro Blast number one. I don't think there were any others in this series, but if you're interested in art like this and art like all this stuff, uh, check in with Don Marquez. Uh, he's got an eBay page. He's got, you know, online social media presence and stuff, and, he's, and this one was from uh, Emerald Entertainment. Uh, and I think he now produces his own. He self self publishes his his work. So, uh, but a lot of great stuff like this, uh, and I love this kind of sci-fi. It says here, I'll help you here. It says thrill to alien adventure on no man's planet. Also in this issue, come along with the daring men and women of the Planet Patrol as they undertake the conquest of space. So you can't go wrong there, man. And last, and certainly never, ever least, we have classic Wally Wood here. Here's the Wally Wood Treasury. Now, first thing you may notice is this is not a treasury size. It's actually a magazine size, or a typical magazine size. But they call it the Wally Wood Treasury, and I'm not going to argue. This thing is jam-packed with great Wally Wood art. Uh, this is, is a cover swipe of one of his more famous um, Golden Age uh, covers, and they've kind of taken most of that and put it here. That book is very expensive. I forget which one it is exactly, because every time I see it for sale, it's way more than I'm gonna spend. So I'm like, well, that's a book I may never own. Uh, but it's absolutely fantastic. Classic monster guy coming in trying to save her, and she's just, you know, put up on the rail there. It's just, just she's chained up. And, and if you notice, they're not apologizing for the glare here. Look at that. She's just all, they put all the heavy glare in the right spots. So absolutely fantastic. I'll leave you with Wally Wood. And I want to thank you all for joining me on this journey through the hills of beauty. And um, hope you all like it as much as I do. We'll catch you next time on Bub's Comics. Remember, read a comic and never, ever, ever, ever apologize for the glare. And you know why? Because the glare shows you care. Thanks. Bye-bye.